Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love. And for this Facebook Live, I wanted to talk about heart failure and congestive heart failure. And this is near and dear to my heart because my Doberman Duncan had um, heart failure. And last year I had to say goodbye to him because of just, um, you know, the disease was, was taking too much of a toll on him. So I thought I wanted to dedicate this, just like I dedicate many of my Facebook Lives to, to Duncan. And so um, I, I wanted to first start, let me just check my, my Wi-Fi here because it looks a little bit, a little bit slow. So you'll let me know if it's, if it's, if it's a little slow. So um, hi, Dr. Sheila. So I wanted to first start with a very basic, very high level understanding of, of, of the heart and the blood flow that goes to the heart, because I think that will, will give you a, a better understanding of, of what happens to the heart and why we why we see the heart failure. So again, very high level of, of the heart. So I, I hope you can follow me because it's really going to be easy. So what happens is as our blood circulates throughout our system, we use the, the oxygen and the blood flows to our brains, to our organs and things like that. And so the um, blood is going to flow from our, from our system into our heart. So it first is going to enter the right side of our heart the blood flows into the, the right atrium. And so then the atrium contracts and the blood flow um, is going to then be sent to the right ventricle. Got to make sure I say this right. And so it goes through one of those valves. So there's a lot of doorways or valves. And so that's the tricuspid valve. And then, um, and then when the right ventricle is full, the heart contracts and it's going to be spit out into the lungs. And so that um, where the lungs are going to then oxygenate that that blood so it goes through our lung system to our through our parenchyma through the the tissue of our of our lungs and gets it gets reoxygenated so that's why when we breathe and we and we fill up our lungs with air that's what's happening <clears throat> so then as that um, blood is oxygenated now needs to flow back into the heart and so the pulmonary vein um, brings the the oxygen rich blood into the left side of the heart and so it goes into the left atrium first and so um, when the blood then is uh, ready to go to the right the left ventricle it's going to go through the mitral valve and so a lot of you have probably heard of mitral valve or or some mitral valve disease or something like that because it's very common and, and even in us i actually have a mitral valve little problem and so uh, that is the the doorway between the left atrium and the left ventricle so when that's finally full the uh, ventricle is going to contract and out goes the, the oxygen rich blood into the system. And so then we can use it again in our organs. So that is just a, a flow of the blood going through the system in a very basic way. And really that's all you need to know. Now the heart is, is really doing this dance. And so those chambers are gonna be contracting and, and really working together to as, as blood fills up and then gets pushed out. And so um, there's some some structural integrity of the heart to make sure that performance is done well. There's also some electrical activity to make sure that that performance is done as well. Um, so we want to make sure that our hearts are functioning properly so that that's why we, we our heart beats throughout the day. And if you've ever get and when we have high blood pressure, what does that mean? And things like that. So there are a lot of different, um, conditions of the heart that that lead to heart failure and so um, whether they are structural so maybe those doorways don't work really well so um, like I was talking about that mitral valve that doorway needs to shut so that way when the blood goes gets squished out into the rest of the body blood flow doesn't kick back up and so sometimes that happens where the doorway isn't isn't so isn't so well um, or uh, so that's one structure problem Another structure problem is, is the, the, the heart is a big muscle. That's all the heart is, is a muscle. And so uh, the walls of that heart may not be so, so strong, and so it can't actually push the blood really well to kick it out. Or, um, or maybe it's just, it's just uh, there's, there's a disease called dilated cardiomyopathy, so it's kind of stretched out, and so it can't make a good contraction to push the blood out. So there's a lot of different structural problems that a dog or cat can have, and again, even us humans have, have some of these problems. 
Um, there could be electrical problems. So maybe um, that's where arrhythmias come into place, where the, the, the rhythm's not good. I mean, there's, there's such a rhythm to the heart. Like I say, it's like a dance. And so if there's an electrical problem, you're going to have maybe a heart fast rate or, um, or just the, the pumping is not as well. There's also um, uh, problems that could be caused from parasites. So I live in South Florida again, and the heartworm is a very nasty, nasty guy. And so that's a parasite that lives in the heart. And I actually see a lot of older dogs have heartworm disease because if the family doesn't think we have a lot of time left, they may not be giving the heartworm prevention. And so then that, then that pet may have some heartworm problems. And so over two years, we're going to see some live adult heartworms uh, forming in the heart and it's going to cause some problems. Now, certain breeds will have a predilection to some of these problems. The Doberman is one. Uh, uh, and that's why my Doby had, had some problems. The Cavalier King Charles uh, is another one. Maine Coon cats get, get a certain type of, of heart disease. However, all dogs and cats can, can get some kind of heart disease. Now, what happens when the heart is not functioning properly? A few things are going to happen. Um, if, if the left side of the heart is a problem, so the ventricle has got an issue where the, maybe the ventricle can't kick out blood really good, or maybe there's um, uh, the vessels that the, that the blood has to go through are, are, are congested, um, so like high blood pressure, the fluid is going to be built up in the, in the lung system because it can't get released out. And so that's called pulmonary edema. And it um, can be a real struggle with, with pets to breathe when they have pulmonary edema and, and the blood can't get oxygenated as well. The right side of the heart, which is the, the side of the heart that gets the blood from the rest of the, the body system, the deoxygenated blood into the, into the heart, when that's got some problems, there's going to be back up into the, into the body system. So we may see ascites, which is kind of a swollen belly um, or edema in the legs. So we'll see swollen legs. Now, this could happen, you know, we can get this with both side heart failure, but as a veterinarian, I kind of look at those things to see what, what are the symptoms that I, that I might be noticing. And so um, if, if you notice some of the, the symptoms that are going to occur, oh, I'm seeing some notes over here, and I, I hope my Wi-Fi is okay. So Denise said she's had some cats with congestive heart failures. Yeah, kitty cats are, are, are also very prone to this, and um, like I said, the Maine Coon and, and really all breeds can get it. And so what are signs to look for if your pet is, um, is having some heart disease and then heart failure? So again, heart disease is the disease of the heart that's causing the issue, and heart failure is when the body can't compensate and so we're going to see some symptoms arise because a lot of times you could bring your pet in for the annual exam and the doctor says, hey, I found a heart murmur and you had no idea. And that's totally normal for you not even to know about a problem because, again, I've got a heart valve problem and nobody would know. Can't run as well as probably I did in the past. Um, so don't feel bad if you didn't notice something. But that's why annual exams, especially as a pet gets older, and I would say every six months bring your pet in for an exam that way they can listen to the heart, um, watch their breathing, and, and kind of um, maybe, maybe find some things to, to, look, for, to look for and, uh, and talk to you about as your pet ages what's going to happen. And so we might find it early, and then sometimes we're going to find it late. And this is when you may see the symptoms and when there are more late stages. So what to look for. First off, if your pet is just low energy, right, and they're usually spunky and they've got some low energy, don't just assume that it's mobility issues or something like that, right? If, if they just aren't interested in, in food as much or they just want to lay around, um, so that just may be a sign when it's not normal. And so, you know, my boy Dober, my, my Doberman Duncan, he was, he was a live wire. And so when he was kind of just getting a little more lethargic, I, I had some concerns. So um, another thing you may see again is that they don't have as much of an appetite because they don't want to eat. You know, when you've got heart failure, your primary goal is get to get air into your system. So you just want to sit there and breathe. And the last thing you want to do is have food in your mouth because you can't breathe as well. So that's one reason why they don't want to breathe. And so you may see some respiratory distress. So you may see them actually um, breathing more difficult. Maybe they have a, um, they're panting more, or you'll see more of a belly breathe. So they kind of, <sighs> now I have a video that when we're done with my live, we're going to post the video of Duncan, my boy. I have my picture of Duncan here. So here I am with my boy. Um, and it's a really good example of what a belly breather, a difficulty breathing is. So I want you to watch this video. And as soon as I saw that, I knew something is not right with Dunk. 
Um, so let's see, what are some other things you may see? Pale gums, so you might see some pale gums, or maybe that swollen belly or those swollen legs. So don't just think that you're feeding your dog too much and he's got some swollen legs. There may be something else going on. So just again, a little bit lethargic, coughing, coughing's another one. I almost forgot about that. So if your pet is coughing a little bit more, so um, that was, Duncan was doing that as well. Um, so bring them into your veterinarian, take videos. That's why showing this video of Duncan's important because you know, when your dog goes into the clinic, your cat, well, cats, they're just like, ah. so, so, uh, they may just look crazy going into the clinic or your dog maybe gets super excited. And so, um, they may not be showing the same signs. So take videos of your pet that those are so great for veterinarians to see. And even if we at lap of love are coming to your home for a hospice visit, have some videos ready for us to see. Um, so your veterinarian is going to do a good exam, is going to is going to listen to the heart, all the different sides of the heart to try to locate any murmur issues. We really recommend getting an x-ray done because then we can evaluate the shape of the heart. So Duncan had a big heart. Now, he had a big heart anyway, but his disease had a dilated cardiomyopathy. That means he had a big, big heart. And, uh, and also, we're going to look for, for some fluid backup in the lungs. Um, and then advanced testing, like an EKG, will help look at the rhythm of the heart and the electrical activity. And an echo is like an ultrasound of the heart, where you can see structure and blood flow and things like that of the heart. So I recommend getting that done. Now, your veterinarian may be able to help with some, um, some medication and things like that, or they may actually suggest you see a cardiologist. So there is such a thing as a veterinary cardiologist, a specialist. And that's actually what I saw with Duncan is that I wanted him to, to, to be seen by a cardiologist because even though I'm a veterinarian, I wanted him to, to get the best care. And so uh, we even did more advanced testing with him where he had to wear a little Holter monitor. So it was like a, a, a little vest. And so for 24 hours, they were monitoring his, his heart rate activity and that it was a cool little computer involved. And so then they analyzed it at the end. So um, typically your veterinarian doesn't have those things. So you go to a cardiologist and they'll have those halter monitors. And now, different heart diseases are not going to be needed, you know, needing all these um, uh, evaluations, but just want to let you know that they're available. And so what can we do for our pets with heart failure? First is keeping them super comfortable. So making sure that they've got, um, you know, tranquil environment. I had to make sure that I always had really nice uh, sound playing. So jazz is a good, is a good sound for, for dogs. And, and making sure that he doesn't get worked up for you know hearing things outside. I had put signs, I got them on Amazon, and you know what, we'll put a link to my, to my sign, I forgot about this one. I bought a sign that said, do not ring the doorbell. And there's a lot of signs out there for uh, babies, but I found one for, for dogs, so do not ring the doorbell. And then, um, so that way he doesn't get all worked up. So making, making sure he's comfortable. Also having a fan nearby if there's any respiratory distress because there's receptors in, 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 the, in the dog's nose that as air passes over that receptor, it makes them think that they're not in as much respiratory distress. So if you ever see your dog having that, <sighs> put a fan in front of them. And also we may have to go to the, to the veterinarian right away if you see them in respiratory distress, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so also don't use collars. I would always use a harness instead. Um, and, you know, don't bring them for walks, long walks. They can't handle them. So short walks and certainly not out in 100 degree weather like I have right now in South Florida with 100% humidity. So they need to be early mornings and late and late mornings. Now, your veterinarian may also be uh, recommending to put your pet on some medications. And so one uh, common one is called Lasix, and that's for that pulmonary edema. Um, so I'm just ma making sure I've got my comments. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Um, yes, cats do love the classical music. Um, so pulmonary edema, we may we may recommend that your pet is on something called Lasix, which just kind of dries out the lungs a little bit. Now that may make your pet pee more. So making sure that somebody's home to to let them out may be necessary. Duncan was peeing like crazy. Uh, he had a, a puddle for me all the time. Uh, and then we may put them on some medications that will help their electrical activities or their 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 rhythm, or also things that will help. Um, push the blood out. So vasodilators. So so again, as the blood flows from the heart out into the system, it has to go through the, the venous system. So that it's like a tunnel. And if the tunnel is a little bit too tight, it's hard for that blood to be pushed through. So we may do some, some uh, dilation of them and using some medications for that. Um, so anyway, so just some things. Uh, I'm loving the comments. <laughs> 
Uh, so just some things that, uh, you know, to help with the, with the heart. Now, when I go to a home and, and help a family with hospice or just talking to them about end of life care, I really want to focus on the disease they have and, and how a pet is going to pass from this disease. And, and this part is, is really hard to talk about because any disease that affects respiratory breathing, I'm going to have a very different conversation with the family. So heart disease, heart failure, cancer in the lungs, laryngeal paralysis, collapsing trachea, anything that makes a pet not be able to breathe is really emergency situation, okay? And so I know it's really hard because we want, we want to squeak out every last second with our pets. But if you could imagine the worst way to go is drowning. And unfortunately, with heart failure, the end is going to be them in such respiratory distress because their, their fluid buildup in their lungs, they're drowning. And so if there's ever any, any disease that I say, we have to say goodbye sooner than later, it's with heart disease and heart failure, okay? So not initial, di initial diagnosis, but really when they're starting to have respiratory distress, we have to suffer so they do not. And so last April is, is when I got a phone call from my family to say that Duncan was not doing well and he was breathing difficult and I was out of town and I flew home because I knew I wanted to let my boy go. And it will always seem to... I see I'm trying to reconnect, so I want to make sure. Um, not too sure if you guys can still hear me. It's trying to reconnect. I might just move my computer so you guys can. You know what? I've got a big thunderstorm coming. Okay, I don't know if you can still hear me. I just see a spinning that's saying trying to reconnect. <laughs> and I have got some signal, but I got to tell you, there is a huge thunderstorm coming. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's certainly looming in the background. So let me just see my comments here. Okay, good, you can hear me. <laughs> so here I am. I don't know if you can hear the thunderstorm as well, but thank you, Rich, for letting me know. But you know what, this is a great example. It's hot and humid out here, so my boy, I would never let him out here in this, in this heat. So I really hope this was helpful. I'm sorry for my Wi-Fi, but again, I, I hear a big storm coming. Um, oh good, you're live, thank you. Uh, so I just really want to encourage you to see your veterinarian, get some diagnostics done, because the sooner that we can get a hold of our heart disease, the better and longer our pets can live. And Duncan, Let's see, I, he was diagnosed with DCM in, in August, and I had a good eight months with him. And so it was not really until the end that he started to have a really difficult time struggling. And so I knew I had to make that decision for him. So I hope this was super helpful. Again, we're going to post that video in a little bit. And don't forget to give your recommendations or your, um, or your requests for the next Facebook Live. Thanks for everybody that's here. And uh, until next time, bye.